Okay, very, very quick. I go straight to the conclusion, to the policy proposal, because I'm a lawyer, so I talk about the kind of regulation which is needed for this kind. This is how Airbnb developed in Barcelona. So you will see spots coming out in this. So the, your conclusion, I think, go point in two directions. The first one is more connected to the city, so to the urban space and the impact on cities. So you say, for example, you have this Disneyfication of the city center that create a detachment for the city uh, by the residents and so on, loss of authenticity. And this is changing over time. The second thing you said is more related to the um, market relationship. When you say, when you, when you say there is an in inequality of um, Airbnb, you're talking about balance of power I on Airbnb. So more entire homes, an increase of hosts, uh, listing multiple properties and so on. And you derive two kinds of conclusions. So I, uh, from a legal point of view, which is a way to categorize uh, social needs, I see two very different aspects in your research. The first one is connected with uh, the governance of the city. The second one is connected to the, to the market, the way the market works. And this goes in two very different directions from a legal point of view. And I would say your policy proposal, I find your findings very important, but I find your policy proposal a little too cautious. You can be more ambitious in what you say, uh, in, in both the directions. So the first one, for example, you say find incentives for peripheries. Uh, here, the problem is bigger than that. The problem is that cities no longer have the local sovereignty. They cannot decide any longer for the city. Is what has been called in environmental law is usually called the tyranny of small decision, which means many small decisions taken by each owner that put together create something that has an enormous impact, but it's difficult to regulate because you have to run after a lot of people and it's difficult to enforce because you have to, again, to catch all the violators. And this change, for example, uh, I've been living in Barcelona for a while, and I've been living in one of these 24 hours party zone, and I was old enough not to enjoy the entire thing until late at night. Uh, and the thing is, there you have, when the city could decide what to do, there was just one hotel. This means the city decided this is not a touristic place. Now, this place is the Barceloneta, and now it is full of tourists. Nobody took this decision. It's just many small decisions by many owners, by many people who rent their apartment. And this completely changed the environment. This completely changed the way the city is shaped. And what to do in this case? I would say the the most important thing in this moment, Airbnb, what Airbnb says is, look, I'm just a platform. Um, I don't rent anything. So if you want the law to be applied, just ask people to apply the law. I'm not violating any law. I put in my website the, the, uh, all the news about just obey to the law for the host which is something that it's clearly not enough. So what Airbnb say, it's not my mother to make the law to be respected. And just in a few cities, very small city, in a very powerful city like London, like Amsterdam, and now Barcelona, but it was not easy even for Barcelona, now the platform is liable for having the law respected which is something very easy for the platform to do. So for example, if you, if you decide as a city that no more than 90 days are allowed for an apartment to be rented out, the, 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 the official position by Airbnb is, I don't know how to do, which is clearly false. They are perfectly able to, to stop people at the 91st night to, to not to rent the apartment anymore. And this is something that in this moment is based 
on an agreement on an ad hoc basis for each city, so just the powerful city can conclude this deal with Airbnb, surely not Matera, surely not Florence, and it's something that should be obliged, that should be recognized as a duty for the platform to do. The second one is, an, and this happened again, this is, relates to data, uh, this happens because, as you said, uh, short-term rentals en enjoy an economic advantage over long-term rentals. But you will see in a few months an article published by a few scholars from NYU, uh, Arun Sundararayan and other people is going to be published. Uh, I, I, I read the draft. I saw the presentation that was a closet presentation among the authors of this book. And, and they find a way to show that this is not true, because this is the very basis of how uh, it can create a disparate impact. So they're working hard on demonstrating that such an advantage doesn't exist. Uh, uh, I can say, I, I can say, of course, but, uh, uh, and the way you, you will say better than me, uh, you will be able to show how fl the flaws of this reasoning they are putting. Um, so they think this is a very crucial point for them. So the first thing is, it's much more than giving incentives to peripheries, it's a way to regain sovereignty for the local authorities. In this way, recognizing the, re li the primary liability of the platforms and uh, obliging them to respect the law, for example. The second one is on, the, so, the first findings, I said, they are more on city government. The second part is more on market power. And again, I enjoy very much what you found. I'm not totally, I don't, I don't agree with you with the solution. You say, for example, in your paper I f uh, that you find, and you show it now, uh, huge inequality. You said the inequality of Airbnb. People getting a lot of money, people getting uh, less money, or almost nothing. And you said, in, in your paper you said, it needs further research to know whether this money is because there is wealthy people with a lot of houses or is because there is professionals. And today you said there are a lot of professionals on this platform, it's not wealthy people with a lot of houses. And this from a legal point of view completely changed the, the scenario. Because if this is the case, what happens is you have, so, okay, what the sharing economy create, the platform economy create, is what they label as peer-to-peer -peer economy, which means it's no longer business to consumer, it's two person on an equal standing bargaining each other through a platform which uh, perform a very neutral position because it's a, it's a marketplace. It's both. It's, it can be this, it cannot even be peer-to-peer. -peer. So what is happening is, uh, why they, they label it as peer-to-peer? -peer? It's, it's advertising, but it's also law. Because this means the business to consumer legislation doesn't apply. And that changes completely the legal scenario. So if you have data that show that in this case you have a lot of professional getting into this market and operating as professional, it's not just a matter of having a flat tax rate or having progressive taxation. It's having the business to consumer legislation to be applied. So it's rejecting the overall narrative of the sharing economy, of the platform economy, which is it just people renting out the room. It's do not apply all the legislation. So it's important to, what does it mean, business to consumer? It means that you have a powerful person on one side and a less powerful on the other side, either for uh, asymmetric information of disparity of wealth. In the platform economy, I, I try to investigate this aspect through uh, recognition of all the um, standard form contracts, 
what in legal terms is, are defined as boilerplate. And I could see that there is a new distribution of power in the platform economy among providers, providers vis-a-vis -vis consumers, users and platform, especially at this level. And it's very important if we have data that show that we have professional or that the platform exercises a strong power in the relationship. This is not just a matter of inequality, distribution of wealth, taxing distribution of wealth is more. It's sh changing the way disparity of bargaining power shaped the law in the 20th century. So this is very important to, 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 to define why you have such an inequality because from a legal point of view it changed completely. Just, uh, uh, I, 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 I just stop here, I say just two other things. I agree with you that in Italy there is little debate on long-term consequence, it's just getting some money to restock, getting some taxation and that's it. And that's, it, that is very dangerous. The Italian position in the, is dangerous, the, 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 the European position in this moment is very short sighted. Why? I, I, I was lucky enough to see both the local level in Barcelona, I've been working in Barcelona because in Barcelona Airbnb is not just one thing, it's a real problem for people who get a normal salary who, uh, every three years, the, the normal lease lasts three years, every three years people go to the peripheries because even if they have a decent salary, a decent life, they cannot afford to rent their apartment in the very same place they've been living for the, all their life. So I, I've been see, I, I saw this aspect, I saw the European aspect, I, 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 as Tiziano said before, I, I contributed as an expert to the resolution on the sharing economy and I can tell you that both politically and geographically, you, Europe is highly divided in how to deal with this platform economy. The, the many people think we have to find a way to have our own unicorn, and this is not exactly how to deal with these kind of things. Uh, the, the typical assumption is uh, that the, the, the model is here uh, having information is very important, why? Because the regulatory capture, so the, what the public choice theory defined the regulatory capture, which means legislators don't operate on the behalf of the general public but instead is captured by interest groups. Is based, usually the, the common picture about regulatory, regulatory capture is it's based on money, they pay money to someone. This is true, of course, but the main source for regulatory capture is instead information. And in this case, this is even more reinforced than in the past. This is a conventional argument about regulatory capture, but in this case, it's even more reinforced. The, 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 the conventional argument of the sharing economy, of the platform economy, goes like, we have information, we are marketplace, we, are, we have the interest to have this market functioning, we have, all the, we have an interest to make it function because we run a market and we want the market to work properly first. Second, we have all the tools to do that because we have information. You, public legislator, you legislator don't have the information. So it's very important in this, mo in this moment to have information, providing evidence, pro provide empirical findings, and giving a, an interpretation which is not the conventional one, which is not the one provided by the platform. Second, even more dangerous, Europe is buying this argument. What Europe say is, I won't take any initiative on the legal point of view if I, I don't have empirical evidence which can be something correct, I understand. You say, I want to do something just in case I know exactly what I'm doing, but in this context where there is no information other than information provided by platform, what is going on, these platform are not lobbying for any legislation in their power. They're not doing that. What they're doing is no legislation at all. 
So what they want is not, they're not creating any uh, complex legal scenario where that is friendly for this platform. The, all they want is no legislation at all. And this is what in Europe is happening right now. And I don't see any uh, chance in this moment that things are going to change. So these things are very important exactly to break this status quo. You Uh, th but, but there is one difference. The uh, uh, US has 75% of platforms. Europe's 3.9. So, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. The, the global wealth, it's, there is a study uh, from CB Insight uh, from this summer 2017. And think about the shift of wealth that the platformization of economy is producing. Think about the small and medium enterprise in Italy that are going to sell their products in a, only with a gatekeeper that in many cases is the only gate gatekeeper to a given market and the disparity of bargaining power that is going to occur in this economy. So Europe must tackle this issue in a very original way, which is not the US one, because if we just follow the US recipes, which are the recipes of the platform, we are going to lose. It's, uh, this is what is going to happen. <laughs>